welcome to the uh, course in this teaching period, the automating GIS processes two. Um, today is uh, an introduction lecture, so we will be going through uh, how the course is set up, and then uh, some introductory to some geometric uh, handling in Python, and then also I'll introduce the exercise for the coming week for you. So I think we can go ahead and start with a small presentation about this year's course. Um, feel free to, uh, to uh, either use the reactions in Zoom chat or the uh, chat in uh, the Zoom chat to let me know if there are any technical difficulties or if I'm going too slow or too fast, just let me know. All right, we will get started then. Uh, so, Auto GIS 2021. Uh, yeah, I'll start with introducing you to the team that is behind this course. It is me, Hovar Valin Augustin, who will be running the course this year, uh, hosting most of the lectures and also responsible for the materials. Um, and then we have uh, Wako Heikenheimo, who has been teaching this course before who will also be coming back as a guest lecturer this year. Uh, and together with uh, Henrik e. Tenkanen, they have developed a lot of the materials that you will be taught this, um, this uh, teaching period. And then Brian and Justus will be our um, seminar assistants and will be handling the seminars on Fridays. Uh, I'll get back to that a bit later. Yeah, so that's the team uh, that you will be interacting with this uh, course. In this course, uh, we build upon the GeoPython course that most of you have taken this uh, semester. Um, if you haven't, I recommend going back to the GeoPython website and uh, getting familiar with the concepts that are being taught there and the way ways the, that we do uh, things. So, but building upon the GeoPython course uh, in in the automating GIS two, you will be uh, taught how to. Or the goals is that after this course, you will be able to test and produce modular code in in Python, uh, and we will focus specifically on managing spatial data uh, and doing that in in automating and programmatically programmatic ways. So we will be reading different uh, data formats that are common for GIS. We will be uh, projecting and reprojecting and storing spatial data uh, throughout the course. And then we will be applying spatial analysis methods uh, in Python to that data that we will be handling uh, and uh, visualizing that through graphs and uh, maps uh, uh, with, with Python. And you will also uh, hopefully be able to design and implement uh, geographical data analysis workflows that can be reused uh, and built upon further. So that are the main learning goals for, for this course. Uh, some of the skills that you hopefully end up with uh, is that you are able to uh, search and look for information on programming methods uh, on your own and independently and apply those methods and uh, uh, based upon online documentations uh, and and interacting with that and then also cr to critically evaluate the different methods and information sources that are available and that we use and then also to be able to understand uh, version control. So in GeoPython, you were introduced to Git, which is what we will be using here as well. So you should be able to, to use that for practical tasks and also know uh, how it can be used in scientific purposes. And then also, uh, 
you should be able to communicate uh, the workflow that you create in in a written format uh, as well as communicating with with maps and charts um, and then hopefully also you will be able to complete your assignments on time uh, hopefully every week yes all right so briefly the course materials that we will be using uh, in this course are mainly the auto gis uh, website and where uh, in the same way as in GeoPython, uh, all the materials will be there uh, with the, the lessons, uh, the recordings of the of the lessons will be there, and also the notebooks and and materials that we will be using. Uh, yes, and then uh, the exercises will be uh, dealt with on GitHub uh, and in the same manner as you are used to from from GeoPython. And we will also uh, be using uh, the same Slack work uh, work group, uh, but now with uh, new channels, all that begins with auto GIS. Uh, so if you haven't already logged into the Slack work group uh, uh, lately, then go ahead and at some point uh, join all the different auto GIS channels uh, where uh, me and Brian and Eustace will will be there to help you with any questions uh, that you have. And then uh, the CSC notebooks will also be familiar for most of you. We will be con continue to use that, but uh, in this uh, course, we will be using the Auto GIS 2021 image. So uh, I'll show you that later, but in order to do all the geographical and mapping uh things that we are doing in this course you there are some packages uh, in python that are already installed in the auto gis uh, image so just remember to to use that when when opening a new notebook in cc yes all right so the uh, different topics for uh the, this this course are listed here we will start uh, this week uh, with uh, an introduction to basic basic concepts of uh, geometric objects using the Python package called Shapely. Uh, we'll talk about points and lines and polygons, and that might be familiar to the, those of you who have some GIS experience from before. Um, but we'll introduce that and, and how we can uh, interact with that in Python. Then uh, next week, we will go to, uh, more into uh, managing spatial data with uh, a package called GeoPandas. So you are probably familiar with pandas that we used in GeoPython. Um, but to do even more uh, geo uh, geography things, then GeoPandas is a package that is specifically built for that. So we will be using that to read and write data and handle projections and merging different data sources and so on. Later on, we will be uh, geocoding and doing some spatial queries uh, with different data sets. And, uh, and also we will get into uh, classifying data, reclassify, reclassifying it, and also doing some overlay, different kinds of overlay analysis uh, in week four. And then, in week five, uh, we will be getting deep into visualizations and uh, maps. So you'll be creating both static and interactive maps from data sources. And then this year we are in week six, we are going to do some recap of uh, the course so far, and then prepare you for your final assignments. Because in week seven, Woko Heikenheimo will uh, come and give a guest lecture on open street map data, how you can uh, retrieve uh, data from open street map, use it in Python, and do some, some network analysis with that. And then we will also have some uh, extra materials uh, on the website, which we is more for you if you are extra in, interested in, in those specific topics of raster processing with Python and how to interact 
uh, with QGIS in using Python. Um, so there's not a, a dedicated lecture for that, but the materials are there. Uh, if you would like to, to dig into that and maybe use it as inspiration for your final assignment as well. So the uh, evaluation of this course is similar to what you're used to as well. We have um, weekly exercises that are done individually uh, this, this time. So uh, each week, um, uh, the lectures are on Tuesdays and the weekly assignment materials will be available then. And then the seminars are on the following Friday. And then you have a week uh, to, to submit your exercises. So on the Thursday after that, uh, your assignments, uh, weekly assignments should be handed in on GitHub. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to to work in pairs and to cooperate with others, uh, other students. But uh, you all have to individually uh, submit your own exercises uh, and uh, get grades for those as well. And then in the end, we have a final assignment, which uh, consists of 60% of your final grade. Um, so, um, so that in in the end of the course, uh, that is the final project that you will do also individually. Uh, and for that, um, um, on the website, you will also find the dates for for the deadline for that, which is uh, in in, uh, in January uh, next year. All right. Uh, yeah, and the, those deadlines are also here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for the final assignments, there are two deadlines. It doesn't matter uh, which you choose. It doesn't affect your grade or anything. Um, but if you select to, to submit for the first deadline, we will start grading then, and you will be able to get your credits earlier if that is, if that is something that you want or need. So, but the final deadline uh, is on the 16th of January. All right. So. Why uh, uh, do we want to use Python in GIS or uh, or use GIS uh, processes in Python? So there are many reasons uh, you would want to do that, and some of them are comes down to handling of data sets that are can get very large and difficult to interact with in a uh, desktop application like QGIS or ArcGIS. Um, and then some, some reasons are that you, are, uh, you want to do a repetitive task that, um, that involves a lot of clicking and, and manual uh, work, but that you instead can do uh, programmatically with, with Python. So I thought I would just give you a few examples of um, some work that has been done from former students of, um, of this course uh, in Python. So uh, some of you are probably starting to work on your master's thesis or your master's project and, and might want some inspiration. So here is an example from Emil Enstrom's uh, master's thesis that was submitted earlier this year, where he used Twitter data that was collected using Python, and then uh, captured mobilities of lang different language groups in Finland uh, based on, on their Twitter uh, data and movements. So created different, had a lot of different uh, points, uh, created lines uh, in Python, and both visualized and, and anal analyzed those using, using Python. And then uh, there are some links here for you to, if you want to uh, check, there's a blog post uh, for that Emil wrote uh, after submitting his thesis on the Digital Geography Lab blog. So you can either, if you want, you can read through that or, and then he also has a GitHub re repo 
which if you yeah the slides will be on are on the website so you can also find them there as well so that was one example uh, emil was uh, um, course assistant in this course and has taken this course before as well uh, together with with sonia koivisto who also submitted her master's thesis earlier this year where she looked at also using twitter data looked at different uh, sports activities in the Helsinki metropolitan area, and also uh, did different types of analysis and visualization using using Python, uh, amongst other. So that, that uh, there is also a link to an interesting blog post and her, her nice GitHub repo uh, from, yeah, that is uh, structured really well for, for how to to create uh, um, a workflow with uh, Python and other programming languages as well. So that's some meta, some inspiration for you of what is possible and how you can, can use the skills that you learn in the course um, and advance with that. For example, in a master's uh, thesis. And then some other uses of um, Python. Um, Many of you are probably familiar with QGIS. Uh, and in behind QGIS, there is a Python console uh, or Python that you can interact with and do uh, basically all the operations that you would do in QGIS, you can also do using the Python console. Um, and then you can automate that if you want as well. And you can also create uh, plugins uh, for QGIS uh, with Python. So yeah, if you're interested in, in that, uh, there is a, a link here for one plugin from Geocubes Finland. And then uh, you will also later on the website find um, how uh, a former student here uh, of the course has created a uh, no, uh, <laughs> um, QGIS plugin uh, as well. Yes. So I think that was basically it from now.